In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create realistic muzzle flashes using VCC filters in Adobe After Effects. Hey, here I am in After Effects, and this is the finished result. I've got the rendered video on top of my timeline here. So let's take a look at that rendered result one more time. Okay, so as you can see, I'm letting out a lot of aggression in this warehouse here. And uh, don't worry, no one was harmed in the making of this tutorial. Um, but basically, it's just a, an excuse to show you how to create a muzzle flash and some smoke using filters. Now, one of the advantages to using filters is that if your gun is changing its angle constantly, as it is here, the filter makes it very easy to change the angle of the flare. Also, the smoke, you can do some customized things, such as like blowing it out like that. Okay, so let me show you how this is done. So relatively new comp here. I did already motion track the muzzle on the gun here. Uh, no, no trick to that, you know, just use whatever motion tracking software you are comfortable with. Mocha is a very good one, uh, works very well. So moving on from that point, we're going to create a new solid and gonna call this solid flare. Color doesn't matter. And go into the particles group, BCC 10 particles and apply BCC organic strands to that solid. So this creates a bunch of fun wiggly lines. Uh, it's a very unique filter, uh, one of my favorites. So we're going to make this look like a muzzle flash. So let's solo this track for now and let's make some changes to it. So first let's go into the source group, change the shape from sphere to point. So that just makes everything come from a single point, it looks better for muzzle flash. Now let's do some changes in the strands group right here. Going to increase the count to about 50 or so. And let's change the direction to right. This gives us a better profile of what's happening to these strands. Okay, the spread is a little bit much for this gun. So bring that down, brings all the strands together. 20 is good. The length, again, they're a little bit long, maybe just 1.1. We want the flare to be about the size of the gun. Um, maybe a little smaller is okay, but that's a good rule of thumb. So that's a good length. Length variance, I'm going to increase to 100. This gives us more variety in the look. The thickness, I'm also going to increase to about 50. Kind of get rid of the particle look of the strands, give them more of a solid appearance. And thickness variance as well, bring that up to about 60, just to vary it a little bit more. Uh, taper, we may or may not use, but this is what taper does. It makes sure each strand comes to a fine point at the end, and you can customize that shape here in this graph. I'm not going to use it just yet. Uh, we'll only use it if I think we need to at the end. Okay, now let's change the opacity graph. So we don't want the strands to start fully transparent down here. We want them to start fully opaque and then become transparent. And we can in increase the amount of time they're semi-transparent there. Looks good. Okay, now let's change the colors. Now there's a lot you can do here. You have a whole color band to work with. You can change each swatch individually or you can load a preset. I actually made this preset for the tutorial, My Fire. It's a good quick fire effect, especially for something like a flare that's only on very briefly. And now let's uh, move on from the strands group. So we're done here for now. Okay, now let's go into the organic noise. So the movement that the strands are doing is all controlled in this group, organic noise. First, let's increase the auto evolve speed to like 200. This will guarantee that the flare looks quite different every time we see it. And let's change the noise character. Uh, smooth is default, looks okay. I think spiky works a lot better for this type of effect. It looks a little bit more chaotic, more like sparks. Lumpy also looks really good. Kind of looks more like fire when it's in motion. Uh, but spiky is the one I used in the demo. And that's all we have to do in this group. Now let's go to the particles group. And this is where the magic happens. So first let's bring down the opacity. You notice as you bring down the opacity, you see a lot more texture in the effect. It looks a lot more realistic. And let's also change the transfer mode from add to screen. Again, it gives us a little bit more texture to work with. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm not really happy with these blurs though. They're just kind of uncharacteristic. 
So we're going to change the image from blur to image collection. And this gives us a whole lot of options here. A lot of these look great. Um, cloud white is a really good one. Mist white is also really good, a little bit smoother than the other one. Um, Real smoke looks pretty good. Gives you a lot more of a granule look to it. The one I chose before is noise blurs white, and I'm going to stick with it again. I feel like it gives a sort of mix of spark and smoke at the same time, uh, which I think works really well. Okay, so if you wanted to fine tune the opacity and transfer mode again, you could. You have this transfer composite mix, which lets you kind of back off the transfer mode. Okay, so now that I see how the flare looks, I think it looks pretty good. You have a little bit of its own smoke, what looks like smoke there. Um, again, if you go back into strands and you want to change the opacity along the length of the strand, you can do that. Like so, I can make the whole second half much less opaque. And that gives us a cool like flare and then smoke. But I'm going to keep it like so. I think that looks good. But I am going to put the taper on. So that kind of does the same thing, makes it taper off like a flame naturally would. I'm not going to change the shape of the taper. I think this is pretty good. I am going to increase the density though to 250 just to decrease the particle look of the strands at the end. And I'm going to increase the length just a little bit to compensate for that. So 1.3 is good. Okay, so that is the flare. Now it looks great on its own. We have to make sure it looks good on the footage too. Obviously this this is not going to do. So we'll change the transfer mode to screen when we're really done at the end. But for now, going to keep it normal so we can see what we're doing. So now we need to move this flare around and make it match the motion of the gun. So part of that work was done for us by motion tracking. So to link these two up, I'm going to go into the transform group, animate center X, Y. I'm also going to animate rotation X, Y, and Z. Hit U to reveal that parameter in the timeline. So alt click on the stopwatch next to center X, Y, and then grab this pick whip here and link it to the nulls position. So that will match my motion track perfectly. Looks good. And now we just have to rotoscope the angle so the flare looks like it's in line with the gun. And you don't have to do this frame by frame. Uh, depends on your footage, of course. But And just make sure you kind of hit the high points of the motion. So on, on this one, it's pretty static, pretty profile the whole time. Only a slight dip in angle there. So I only need a couple keyframes for it. Might be a good idea to change this last keyframe to a hold keyframe, just so you don't have to worry about it. And you can just pick up where you left off right here. Just maybe create a new one, like so, as you need it. And there's really not a lot to change right there. And here we go. So this is where I'm aimed at the camera. So to compensate for that, I would just change the rotate Y so the flare is coming right at us. And maybe change the rotate Z so it looks right too. But then, of course, we'd take that off the hold keyframe. Okay, so this is basically it. You can fine tune the timing a bit so it keeps up with your footage. Again, it's no magic bullet, so to speak. Um, it's basically rotoscoping, but it gives you a really good result. So this process, I can fast forward since you've seen the basic idea here, and I'll skip to the end of that for you. There. Okay, so I finally finished rotoscoping the angle of the flare so it matches the movement of the gun, and it looks pretty good. So it looks a little strange having such a strong flare on the gun the whole time. So now we can start to make it blend into our footage a little better. So let's find, this is a good frame, I think, to <laughs> very good frame to freeze on here. Uh, let's change the apply mode of the whole layer to screen. So that certainly helps a lot. We're not going to add a motion blur because in reality, the flare would be going so quickly, it, there wouldn't actually be a motion blur on it. We do need to make sure the flare flickers, though. So again, we're going to use the layer level opacity to do that. 
So go to the first frame where you think the gun should be firing. So probably about here looks pretty good. And what we're going to do is create an opacity keyframe at 100, and then go up one frame and set the opacity to zero. Now we're going to make these both hold keyframes. So once the gun starts firing, you don't want the flare on screen for more than a frame at a time. You can put more than a frame of space in between flares. I would recommend doing that just to mix it up a little bit. You don't want it to be too uniform. And based on my acting here, <laughs> I'm being generous with the term, I think the gun stops firing there. So I'm going to delete that last keyframe. OK, so as I just scrubbed through, you can see now it looks like it is firing at that time. Great. You can also see it looks kind of strong. I mean, it's a bright object. But again, being realistic, a camera might not pick it up at full opacity like that. So instead of alternating the opacity between 0 and 100, let's actually bring it down a little bit more. So instead of 100, let's maybe bring them down to about 90. And that's much better. You could also make changes to the opacity and the filter controls. But we're going to want to have these keyframes available for other filters on the layer level. So for now, it's a good idea to just trust me on this and use the layer level opacity. OK, so we're going to copy that whole set of keyframes find the next group where I'm firing off. Looks like it starts about here. And just paste them back in. Looks like I stop about there. And same idea. Just copying and pasting keyframes again. I'll speed it up for you. And this looks like the point where I finish. So let's delete the end of those keyframes. Uh, of course, we're going to do one more zero keyframe at the end. OK, so that's how the flare is created. But there's one other thing you want to do to make your gunshots look more realistic, and that's to add some kind of brightness on the background whenever the gun goes off. So what we're going to do to do that, I'll just quickly show you the process. Copy and paste your source footage. And on the top layer, apply some kind of brightness and contrast effect. Increase the brightness a noticeable amount, but not too much maybe like 25, 26. And then what we're going to do is, again, rotoscope the areas of the frame that would be illuminated by the gun. So this has nothing to do with uh, BCC effects at this point. It's just kind of a good technique for setting up this effect. And you want to catch maybe half of your subject holding the gun with the flare, and then most of the background if it's if it's right next to it like this is. And then to smooth things out, we don't want this harsh line of brightness. Feather that mask a uh, good maybe 50 or so pixels. More if you want to really diffuse the light that comes from the gun. And this gets into why I did opacity keyframes here, because we're just going to copy and paste the whole set of these onto this brighter track. So we're revealing the opacity with T going to the first frame where everything all starts, creating a keyframe there, and just pasting. So now as I quickly kind of scrub through this part here, so you can see how adding this brightness really helps sell the effect, makes it feel like the flash is happening on scene. Um, anyway, so that's how you would go about the rotoscoping process here, but you don't need to see me do it on every frame, so I will just fast forward to when this is done, and we will pick up with the smoke part of the tutorial. So when we last left off, I showed you how to create a brightness mask on your background footage. So every time the gun fires, the background gets illuminated just a little bit, which is a very important element to include in the effect to really sell it that it's actually happening. And now that that's done, we can create the smoke, which we're going to do with another filter, BCC particle emitter. So let's create a new solid going to make this smoke. And the solid is gray, but the color doesn't matter. We're going to apply Particle Emitter 3D onto that solid. And as you can see, the solid disappears. And we have all these fun particles flying around. Actually, I love how that looks. It looks like I'm trying to shoot, like, I don't know, popcorn or something. That's great. All right, but let's make these particles look like smoke. 
and I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to load a preset that already looks like smoke. The good news is if you downloaded BCC, you will have this preset, smoke slow gray BSP. So just apply that. It already looks like smoke. Uh, looks like a smoke stack though. We want to make it look like puffs of smoke. So I'm just going to change a few of the parameters in this filter to do that. First in the emitter group, we're going to increase the birth rate to about 80. Gives us more to work with. Uh, we're going to increase the particle speed to 25. And now it's going everywhere. So let's turn down the particle lifespan to two. and keeps it more localized. Uh, so just like puffs of smoke. We're going to change the emitter shape to point. So it all stays on target. And let's also change the lifespan random to about 75. And similarly, the speed random percent to about 75. Next, let's turn off gravity and instead use upward motion. Um, you could use gravity. I just find it simplifies things to just use the speed and manually set it. The acceleration type is going to be explosive. So this gives it that acceleration element, which looks like gravity is affecting it anyway. So you can see what I mean. It just simplifies it to not also use gravity. And that's pretty much all we have to do. A couple other things we can do. I'm going to increase the time resolution to times two. Whenever you have a emitter that's moving around a lot, increasing the time resolution helps it stay on target better. There's also this inertia from emitter which with a moving target will have your particles kind of sway with the emitter. It looks really good. Um, we don't need to do it for this tutorial just yet, but you might want to do it in yours. Okay, now let's change the particles group. Let's increase the size of these particles a bit. Do about 270. I'm going to decrease the size random to 25 to keep them a little more consistent. I'm going to go into the size evolution graph here and really have the particles get big real quick and then gradually taper them off. We don't need to make them go down to zero size though. Uh, and opacity is where we can have them fade to zero. So open the opacity graph. Again, we want them to come up real quick and then kind of fade off and soften that a little bit. And scrubbing, we can see how it looks. Uh, it looks pretty good. We also want to bring down the overall opacity like way down, like to 20 or less. For now, I'll leave it around 20 so we can see what we're doing. Uh, we're going to make it even lower later. In opacity random, bring that up to about 80. This gives it a little bit more texture. Okay, that's all we need to change right now. So next, let's go to the emitter, create a keyframe on position XY. And then in our timeline, hit U to reveal the position XY. And on the null object, which has already been motion tracked, we're just going to link these two parameters. So alt click on position XY on the particles, and then pick whip them to the position of the null. And now we have our emitter following the location of the gun barrel. Uh, just that easy, pretty much. And that looks pretty good. Again, you can see what I mean with the inertia so if I turn this up just to show you how it looks, even just a little bit, like let's say to 8%, you can see how the puffs of smoke kind of overcompensate for the motion. It looks really good. It's very realistic. Um, and in fact, maybe we'll, we will use a little bit of it, just like five. The reason I wouldn't use it too much is because we don't want it to drift away from the gun barrel. Um, for this effect, remember the smoke is always coming right from the barrel or at least the end of the gun so we don't really want that to drift too much okay so the smoke is very obvious let's change the apply mode to screen so that certainly helps it's still pretty obvious so we're going to bring down the opacity in the particles a little bit more now maybe to like 15. okay so that's pretty good we want to see that it's there. We just don't want it to be too obvious. We could have the smoke go away with the muzzle flashes, but you can also just leave it on like a smoking gun. So I'm going to leave it on. But if you do want the smoke to go away, what I would do is animate the size of the particles to make them fade out. So let's do that at the very end. 
There's the last shot. So at that point, let's create a keyframe for size. Let's go forward a bit. About here, let's have the size be 80. So there you can see the smoke more naturally goes away. Now that puff I do there at the end is actually animated. So obviously I'm not tracking anything at that point. I just put in some keyframes. So the null object moved away from the barrel in a realistic fashion. And that's it. That's, that's all I had to do to make the blowing effect work. Um, we also want to make sure the emitter stops emitting at some point. So maybe after it moves away, go into the emitter group, create a keyframe, go forward one more keyframe, and then set it to zero. So that'll make sure the smoke stops coming at the end. Uh, similarly, in the beginning, we don't want smoke happening before the gun fires. So that's the first gunshot there. Let's create another size keyframe on that frame. Go up one and set the size to zero. So making that change happen over a single frame makes the smoke appear instantaneously. You could also do that with opacity. Um, I wouldn't use birth rate for things that need an instantaneous change like that. You know, it takes some time for the particles to, to grow. So size and opacity give you that instant result. Okay, so there's only one last thing I want to do to the smoke, and that's add a motion blur. Now, we could just use the motion blur uh, that comes in the filter, but what I like even better is to just add a vector blur. One of the things I especially like about using a vector blur is how it connects the individual particles of smoke together. So I'll show you what I mean. So here's how it looks without any kind of vector blur going on. If I set this to perpendicular and increase the amount to like 40, um, it sort of fills in the gaps and gives you a very swirly, almost vortex-like result. Um, it's not perfect for every situation. I wouldn't always use it. Motion blur can be better for some cases, but especially blowing out smoke when you want to see some of those swirls, it just makes a lot of sense to use it. There, there it goes. Okay, now that covers pretty much everything. Just a few finishing touches I can put on this overall effect. Obviously the footage here was not color corrected, so just to quickly copy this curves filter to get a better looking uh, source footage there. That really exaggerates the blast difference, but let's not exaggerate it too much. Uh, now that we made that darker, the smoke's too bright. So going to the smoke, let's bring down the opacity again to like 10. And you know what? I'm gonna go the extra mile and put a film glow on the flare. Not much of one, just enough to give it a little extra kick. So gonna turn off independent glows, turn glow desaturation to zero, maybe boost that glow just a bit. And there you go. So that is definitely a muzzle flash with all the violence it implies. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed watching this tutorial. I know I've had a lot of fun making it. And if you want to try your own but don't have BCC, you can download a free trial version of the product on our website. And that's at borsefx.com.